Hi everyone, I'm Gwen from Nile. Nile is a serverless Postgres built for building modern SaaS applications. And the thing about modern SaaS applications, or any SaaS application, is that they're multi-tenant. And Nile has this very unique functionality that we call virtual tenant databases. Virtual tenant databases allow you to isolate each tenant to its own database. You can place them in different regions in the world. You can connect to a database that is specific to that tenant. You can do other database administration operations on a database that is specific for each tenant. On the other hand, we also provide the experience that you can treat all your tenants as if they are part of a single Postgres. And this really simplifies a lot of the complexity around writing applications for your databases, managing permissions, all kinds of scripting and hacking to manage the database for all those tenants. So you really get the best of both worlds. Now we're here in this tutorial, so I can show you how it works. And I'm going to show you that by showing you how I build a to-do list application using Nile and using Node.js and the Express framework. And it's going to be in three parts. So first of all, we're going to do some setup. So I'm going to show you how to create a database. I'm going to show you how to create a schema. I'm going to go over a few Nile features as we're doing that. Then we will switch over to the command line. We will clone an example project and we will configure it and we will run it. So I will show you kind of what I built and how this to-do list works. And then when you have a sense of what I built, we will switch over to a text editor. And in the text editor, I will go over implementation details. So you will really understand how the Nile tenant virtualization is used in a Node.js application and how this helps you write code that is simpler and safer. So first things first, let's grab some coffee and get going. Let's sign into Nile and I'm going to create a new database for this tutorial. I use the default name here. Okay, so we have a database and over here you can see the built-in table. We did not create that one. It came with the database. And the idea is that tenants is such a core concept for every SaaS product that Nile provides it as default schema. And you can see that it had some default columns, things that you're likely to need, like name. And in general, Nile has a bunch more built-in uh, tables, and you can learn about them in our documentation. Now, built-in tables are really nice, but in order to build our own product, we're going to need our own table. So let me grab our table. Okay, and here it is. So we have a to-do list, and that's where we're going to store our to-dos. The One of the things I want you to pay attention to is that we have a column called tenant ID. The idea is that every row in the table is a task and it belongs to a different tenant. So each tenant will have its own to-do list. In Nile terms, tables that have tenant ID column are called tenant aware tables. And if you don't have this column, it's a share table. And Nile's tenant virtualization features are built on top of those tenant aware tables and allow you to, it's basically like each virtual database for each tenant has its own to-do table with just rows that belong to this tenant ID. So we have this now. And before we leave this UI and start running the application, there are a few more things we need to grab. So let's go into settings and we're going to need to copy all of those. So we'll need the workspace and the database. And then I'm also going to need to grab credentials. So let's generate credentials, copy them. 
Yes, I saved them and finish. Fantastic. So we're all ready to start running our application. So let's move over and open a terminal. So I had to delete an old copy and now I'm cloning a new one. Now let's go into this directory. This is the example we're going to run and we need to set up the environment. So, so let's edit it. And now we need to start copying all those parameters that we had earlier. So we have the DB user and these are both UUIDs. And then I have the space. And now I'm going to need the workspace and database again. And I know it looks silly, but hear me out. We're going to have a backend in Node.js and this is a backend. So I can have the database user and password and everything in the parameters and it's all very secret. But there is also a front end and the front end also needs to talk to Nile, but this is over a public open API. So those are not secret. And you can see that I'm separating the two parts of the application from one another. And this is why I need the some of these details twice. Okay, now that you have that, let's start running the app. So this basically installs the dependencies for the application. Now that we have our dependencies, we can start the application. Okay. So this is our application. And as I mentioned, it has a React frontend and a Node backend. So before we do anything else, let me just show you how to use it. So first of all, I don't have, I just created a database. Obviously I don't have users. So let's sign up and let's, it doesn't validate email because it's a simple example. So I can use whatever I want. And I am now logged in. Now that I'm logged in, I can create a tenant and I have a tenant I can have a to do. So that's pretty cool. Let's do another tenant and another to do. So now that we played around, let's go see what it's like in the database. So we're going back here to the query editor and we can pick at the tenants table and you can see the two tenants I created. And if we look into to do's table, we can see the to do's. So you can see that basically we have a web app talking to our database. Uh, what's so exciting about it? Why do is it even worth talking about? For this, I want to show you the code. Okay. So I'm right now I'm looking at the backend in Node.js application and it's using Express, which is a very popular uh, application server for Node.js. And I'm not going to talk a lot about React because the React part mostly just does API calls to my backend and the backend is the one that's doing the cool things. So the first thing that you can see the backend doing is setting up a Nile server. And this is where all the environment that we went over earlier is coming to play. Then I have a bunch of middleware, which is very normal for Express uh, applications. So I'm parsing the JSON and I'm parsing the pass and I'm parsing the cookies and I'm parsing all kinds of things. But I have one extra important middleware, which is on all the tenant routes. And this one is checking if the user is authenticated. So first of all, if the user is not authenticated, we just throw an error and toss them out. We don't actually need to do it because Nile actually, if we try to use it with unauthenticated users, it will give us errors, but it's easier to do the error handling over here. Once we know the user is logged in, we're configuring Nile with the user token and the user ID. And we move to the next middleware. This one is checking if the pass param has a tenant ID, it is also setting the tenant ID. So every pass that has a tenant ID, we are picking that up as well. And we're configuring Nile with all of those. Why are we doing all this? Well, let's take a look at how we are using the APIs. So let's start with creating a tenant. And to create a tenant, we need the name. We're throwing an error if you don't give us a name. 
And then the next thing that it's doing is calling Nile API create tenant. Now this doesn't just create a tenant. It creates a tenant and connects it to my user. What does it mean in practice? Let me show you. If we show all the built-in tables, you can see we also have tenant users. And you can see here that each tenant that we created is connected to a user. And those are both the same user, right? Because I went and created two tenants. So both those tenants are create, connected to my user. But over here, I don't have to tell Nile, create a tenant and then connect it to the user. I don't have to tell it even what is the user for that matter, because I already set it up in the interceptor. So all I have to do is call create tenant and pass in the name. And then that's it. That's all I'm doing here. A another interesting API that is worth looking into is the one for listing the to-dos. Get all tasks for tenant. So you see that we have the tenant ID in the pass. The middleware actually picks it up and tells Nile this is the current tenant. It also has the current... So Nile knows what is the current tenant, what is the current user, and it has its access token, so it can actually validate it. And you can see here that I'm calling Nile and running a query. Uh, so I'm telling it, uh, look at the to-dos. Do so, it's basically select star from to-dos, right? Look what I don't have. I don't have a work clause. Why don't I need a work clause? Because I already set the tenant ID for Nile. And I set it in the interceptor, and then I'm running the query here. This is, but when I set the tenant ID in the middleware, it basically told Nile, I don't want just any kind of database connection to the entire database. I want a connection to the virtual database that belongs to that specific tenant. And once I have this connection to the virtual database for that specific tenant, any query I run, all my selects, my updates over here, you can see my inserts slightly up, all of those, they are happening in that context of that DB that belongs to that tenant, which means that I don't need a work loss. It's magically limited to that context. And it means that I cannot really make mistakes. It means my code is really clean. It's cleaner. It's safer. So this is really nice. You can also see over here that I have another endpoint. It's called insecure which means it doesn't have a tenant ID. So the middleware doesn't even run on this route. And if I call that, it has the same query, right? It also does select star from to-dos. But this one actually, because it doesn't have the middleware, it acts on the entire database and it returns all the results, which is, well, just don't do it in production. Okay, enough tutorial. We learned quite a lot today. So let me summarize quickly what we learned. So first of all, we've seen the Nile built-in tables and specifically the tenant table. And then later we saw a few more built-in tables. We learned about Nile's tenant award table. We learned about Nile's session context and how session context and the tenant aware tables work together to provide the virtual tenant databases, which is Nile's unique feature that allows you to both work with individual databases for each tenant and with a single database that contains all your data. And then we learned how to use all those features to build a small to-do application in Node.js. I hope you've seen how it really makes your code both cleaner and safer. So I hope that you got to follow along the example with the code on GitHub. If you haven't, now would be a great time to rewind a bit and go grab clone the code from GitHub and try things out, play around with it. If you have questions, if you want to argue, if you have thoughts and opinions, Please join us on Discord. We have a lot of people there that use Nile and they have a lot of thoughts and opinions. You can also open requests or questions or complaints in our GitHub discussion forum. So with that, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me. 
I hope you're going to build a very successful SaaS on Nile.